What is going on, ladies and gentlemen? I'm not a financial advisor. This is not financial advice. Um, if you want to watch my live streams every single day, okay, I know, I know it's a lot. Every single day, no one does that. Then click the WAP link in the description below. Um, and uh, yeah. And then if you want to buy a prop firm account, which I strongly recommend, you can use my code in the description for 71% off. Um, it's like RBE something. Just click the Apex link. Um, probably the cheapest evaluation, so accounts are fine, and it's futures and futures away better than Forex. So click that if you want. Um, all right, so I'm gonna be going over um how I do my standard deviations. And there's gonna I do them different. I do every as everything I do in ICT, I do in my own way. So again, the way I draw them is the same as ICT, but when I use them, how I use them, like this is different. Okay. When I use standard deviations, I think it's too extra. I don't think you need standard deviations. So what do I do? I make sure I'm analyzing whatever play I'm getting in. I'm analyzing it based off of what I teach. So inversions, I'm getting an offer in inversions. And then once I'm in the actual play, that's when I look for a standard deviation. Okay, because when I'm in the actual play, you're not going to see a standard deviation mess up my analysis because I already did the analysis. I'm just drawing the standard deviation after I'm in the play. Does that make sense? So, for example, let's say I think this is a market. So, this is a market structure shift, for example. Okay. We get a, why is my line though so thick? We get a clear entry here, bullish entry. Okay. And when you're looking to draw a standard deviation, okay, it has to be out the manipulation leg. So, you need to try your best to outline this price as lines not candles so if you can see this is the line not a candle that's what you want to do so look see how you can just visualize this as lines only okay, if you can do this you're set so if i went to a line chart it probably would look similar okay yeah see so if you guys can visualize this in lines that's gonna be you're gonna be able to do this very easily you know, no matter what chart you're on it should be lines okay so you you kind of mark out okay the structure with lines okay this is your structure okay you get your marker structure shift here okay and all you have to use to draw the standard deviation is this you're looking for a manipulation leg so if we create a low then lower low and then break the high that creates the low see that so we have to break the high that makes the low okay and that is the manipulation leg right here. Okay, right here is the manipulation leg. Okay, same thing if we're going um, down. Okay, we have to break the low that made the high. See that? Make this really quick. So we have to break the low that made the high. Okay, this has to be a high. So like this wouldn't work for a manipulation leg. See this leg? Because this low doesn't take out this low. Okay, so this is not a manipulation leg. This is your manipulation leg because this is the low that takes out this low. And then we make a new high right here. Okay, so do you guys see what the manipulation leg is now? Um, And I know this is spelled wrong. Okay, I'm not going to change it. But this right here. Is a manipulation like you're just you just gonna have to pause it, look at a few visuals because this is the basic, this is the most basic I can make this. Okay, it's the low that takes out the low that made the high. And in this place, in this case, it's the leg that takes out the low that made the high. Okay, so it takes out the low that made the high. Takes out the low that made the high. Okay. Got it. So now when we look at structure, okay, like this, the only low that is taken out that makes the high is this leg right here. This is the only manipulation leg. So this is where you draw your standard deviation on. Okay, because this leg takes out this low. Okay, this leg takes out this low and then makes a new high after taking out the low. So this is the manipulation leg. So you take your standard deviation, which I have a little uh, reset firm, I think. Sweaty fibs. Oh, this is my... Yeah. 
Okay, so I think I deleted it. But for a standard deviation, what you're going to want drawn is a 0, 1, 0 0.5, negative 1, negative 1.5, or negative 2, negative 2.5, negative 4. These are the ones that I um, change to negative 4. So these are the ones you want. Okay. Pause the video and uh, screenshot these. And uh, I like to have them dotted. Okay, so these are the ones you want. Um, so now, how you draw it is if we have a manipulation leg. Okay, so the manipulation leg is here because it takes out the high and the low. You start right like this. You draw them from this low to this high, the manipulation leg. So you're only using the manipulation leg. Okay, so you just do that. And then, yeah. Okay, so those are the fibs. All right. So if we take that same logic and apply it here, on this manipulation leg only, I'm stopping right here because this is the end of the manipulation leg. Okay, then you do that. Okay, so you're probably wondering, like, how do I use these? Well, what I would do is, Maybe if I was long here, okay, what I do is typically this is a good target. And if the bias is bullish or if the bias is bearish, usually like the, this is a good rejection spot, but that's not really how I use them. That's just something else you can back test. But let's say I'm looking for liquidity. I'm looking for this negative four to line up with a high. That's what I like using these for. So if I just drag this over, see how the negative four almost lines up with this high? So that just gives me more confluence to maybe hold a runner till here. Okay. So I prioritize liquidity over standard deviations. So all I'm looking is for confluence. I'm looking for this negative 2.5, negative 2 zone to match up liquidity, which it does. And I'm looking for the negative 4 to match up liquidity, which it does. If it does not match up a liquidity, I probably won't use it. It has to match up a liquidity. So if it does, I'll hold the runner. If not, then I probably won't. So see how that works. So, like, if we go into the chart and be like, hmm, where do I want to hold till? Does the negative four line up with liquidity? It does. Well, in that case, I'll hold a position here. And I'll just sell at the negative four. Or I'll, I'll, I'll probably sell at liquidity, not the negative four. I think selling at liquidity is better um, as long as they're kind of somewhat close. Okay. Now, um, another example. Okay, let's see if we get a manipulation leg up here. Okay, we get another manipulation like here. Okay, you should be able to see it right away. If you can visualize these lines, you can see it right away. Okay, see this? And then we kind of get this little failed swing and then down again. But here's your manipulation leg because we break this low and this takes out this high. So you just do it reverse. You start your standard deviation from here, here, okay? So let's say, so let's say I'm looking for some sort of liquidity. Does this negative two or negative two point five line up with liquidity? Yes, it does. Lines up with this perfectly. So I'd probably be mostly out there. And then does the negative four line up with liquidity? Yes, it does. So maybe I leave a runner till here. And this does not ever hit. Um okay, this doesn't ever hit, but it's still the same concept. Um as long as it as long as these line line up with liquidity. It's probably a good sign. Okay. Now, this is better liquidity than this. This doesn't, this is not really good liquidity to me. This is just a random swing low. This is like a big swing low inside a fair rally gap. So for me, I know I said I would hold everything else still down here, but I probably wouldn't because this to me is okay. This is actual real liquidity. This is just structure liquidity. Um, so I definitely like this better. I probably would not hold runners past here if it was me, but that's just, that's a different thing. Um, so we got that. Another leg could be, um, let's see if we see another one here. Uh, there's a really good example yesterday that lined up pretty perfectly. Okay, we have this one right here. Okay, you get a high. And we break that and we kind of get a little like that. See it? See how this is the manipulation like? Because we take out the high and then we take out the low. 
So here's another example. Start from the manipulation leg, draw it down like this. And does this negative two area zone line up with liquidity? Yes, it does. And this is a very good liquidity point. See this? Bunch of lows right here. So see how it lines up nicely? So that would just give you a lot more conviction. Does this line up with liquidity? No, it doesn't. This just lines up with a random Fabriola gap. So I probably want to hold till down there. So the only way I hold to the negative four is if it matches up with some sort of key liquidity. The only thing that does in this example is this right here. Um, so yeah. And uh, yeah, that's about that. Um, I think one more I could maybe draw is a three minute one right here. There's kind of a three minute here, I guess. Not really the greatest, but I guess you could argue that maybe. Like, I don't even know. You could argue that like this is the swing high from here. So you can maybe argue this is the manipulation leg. I guess it's really up to the decretion there, but Here's another one right here. Um, it, look at look how this lines up. Okay, perfectly lines up with this. And what happens is we almost hit it, just fail short. We fail at the negative two point five, and then we end up hitting it later. But it still applies. Um, let's see if I can go over one more example here. Um, not really manipulation leg because there's no see how there's no swing high here so there's nothing i could draw it off of it needs to be a swing high here uh let's see i guess this could be one as well so what i'm doing when i use these is i'm like i'm making sure i'm doing analysis before getting in using the standard deviation like I'm making sure that i know what i'm doing without the standard deviation first and then i'll add the standard deviation later Okay, um, this one lines up perfectly with the uh, with this high, and this is an example where I wouldn't hold to the negative four here. I just sell it liquidity, but I would try holding there because it lines up, and it's a, just a zone. Okay, so I'm selling it the liquidity point mainly. Okay, I don't care if the negative four is above it as long as it's close. I'm selling there. So that's a little video on how I use standard deviations again. Um, there's different ways you can use them, but this is the way I found to be the simplest. I like when it lines up and I do the analysis after I'm looking for the trade because I don't want a standard deviation to mess up the trade I'm actually in because I don't want analysis paralysis. So hope you guys enjoyed this video. Let me know if you have any questions and uh, yeah, go buy my merch. All right, goodbye.